And then the next part of chapter two, I break down the problems with the healthy approach to nutrition and systemic care. Now, there are three key pieces that I want to talk about here that I talk about throughout the book uh, when it comes to systemic care and nutrition. Three flaws that I found as in my journey and Eve's for sure and working with people. But the first thing I just want to point out is how health is mes- measured in systemic care. So how do we measure somebody's healthy? It's, it's blood tests is probably the number one thing. There are scans, et cetera, but the scans can tell you absolutely if you have something. It can't absolutely tell you if you don't, right? It's, it's all search and destroy the health model. Hey, let me take an x-ray. Let me do this test to see if you have cancer, to see if you have this, to see if you have this, see if you have this problem, if you have that problem. It's just a search and destroy mission, right? And so how health is measured in the traditional model is is basically blood tests. And then we base everything off of how do we get the blood test and or the scale, because those are the two big ones, blood tests and scale determine health. And so we create these models to get our blood tests and our scales to look healthy, okay? And so the two models that have been created to help us be healthy systemically that have to do with nutrition are the USDA food recommendations and the diet and exercise model. And that's the, these are the, these are the two things that I focus on here in the second part of chapter two, um, filling up, uh, fill me up with zero octane fuels. So we're going to talk about that here. So the USDA recommendations, here's the, the latest USDA uh, health pyramid, uh, food pyramid, excuse me. And as you can see, like I said, most of the recommendations is is grains, right? As I said in the book, 80% of the world is fed on grains. And 40% of what we're being told to eat by the the government and the USDA is is grains. Now, uh, not only are they recommending it, but they're also subsidizing farmers to make all this stuff, okay? And so... All of the resources are being driven for people to eat these things. It's the cheapest stuff. And I'm going to get into survival foods in chapter five when we go into the systemic. But this is the model that they do. So if I'm the government, and let's just say in a perfect, you know, if I'm a government, I've got all these people I got to take care of. Let's just assume they've created this model because they want to make sure everybody's fed. It's a quantity issue. Like I wanna make sure everybody has food. It's like, okay, well, what's the fastest, cheapest, easiest way to feed people? Boom, here you go, man. This is all cheap food. Rice, beans, grains, it's cheap. And it can be and it can be mass produced and then subsidize farmers to do this stuff, right? Okay, and let's take another, another look here. So, so, okay, so, Quantity is the focus here, not quality, not vitality, but it'll keep you alive, right? It'll keep you alive. Might make you sick, but it'll keep you alive, okay? So here is their dietary guidelines for Americans, 2020 to 2025. So this is hot off the presses for USDA. Making nutrient-dense choices. So I just thought this was perfect, okay? So you'll see the nutrient-dense foods and then the typical things that you don't want to stay away from, right? So nutrient dense, plain shredded wheat, definitely don't frost that wheat, don't put any sugar on it. I talk about sugar in chapter five, right? I mentioned sugar needs a new PR firm, right? Bad, bad public relations. So whole wheat, like again, grain, grain, grain. Plain low fat yogurt with fruit. This is probably far their best recommendation in my opinion, (laughs) right? So some good, assuming it's good quality, which probably is not a factor here. But good quality yogurt and some fruit, that, that I'm, hey, I'm with you, I'm with you, USDA. I'm, I'm all on board. That makes sense. And obviously avoid added sugars. Again, I talk about this in later chapters. I don't even know what they mean by sugars because most of this stuff is not sugar. It's artificial sweeteners. It's, it's, it's not sugar. It's, it's, it's garbage. It's chemicals. Okay. But here's where, we, here's where it gets really interesting, right? Low sodium black beans over regular canned beans. So the most nutrient dense choice is the biggest survival food on the planet, which is beans. Okay, I go into beans a lot in chapter five, so I'm not gonna talk about it now, but eat a lot of beans, make sure they're low sodium and don't get the canned ones. I I guess that's much better. Here's the one that, you know, almost makes me like fall over. 
make sure you have vegetable oil and not butter. Like what? Like, are you gotta be kidding me. Vegetable oil is more nutrient dense than butter. It's just craziness, right? But again, what do you think is easier to mass produce? Vegetable oil or good butter? Like this is much easier, but to go to the next step and say this is nutrient dense and butter's not, man, we have gone way too far. And then, okay, sparkling water instead of soda, but um, I'll just say that Mexican Coke is a great option because it actually uses real sugar, but we'll save that for chapter five, all right? And then this next one, which again, just, this is my, this is, this is a picture of me after reading this. I literally went, oh, like you gotta be kidding me, right? So saturated fat, this is the, the, the recommendation to be healthy. Saturated fat should be limited to less than 10% of calories per day by replacing them with unsaturated fats, particularly polyunsaturated fats. If you've read chapter five, I hope you read that and you go, oh my God, I know why Matt's freaking out right now. It's because that's what they're telling us to do. Okay, so if you haven't read chapter five and you're like, why is he freaking out about this? You need to read chapter five, okay? And then the oils they recommend, right? Oils are important. The ones you, the, that you want to consume are canola, corn, olive, peanut, safflower, soybean, and sunflower oils. Oils also are naturally present in nuts, seeds, seafood, olives, and avocados. <sighs> like, I'm just like, oh God. I'm, I'm like, I just, just, I can't wrap my head around <laughs> these recommendations. It's wild, but it completely makes sense why most of the population is where they are with their health. Okay. And again, these are literally directly off the USD website. So, so these recommendations of the USDA, they create one outcome and it's the outcome you see in the world. It's overweight and sick. Okay. Like that's what this creates. And, and it's not my opinion. Just look around you. This is what people are doing. This is what people are being told. Everybody's overweight and sick. They're overweight because it's a quantity thing. It's not a quality thing when it comes to the USDA. It's like, how do I feed as many people? So I give them low quality foods. So I have to eat a lot of it to, to get nourished. This is why people eat so much. Why Americans, especially there's so much on their plate because their, their, their foods are so deprived of the nutrients that the body needs. So I need more quantity. I have more cravings. I crave sugar. I crave salt. I crave fat because there's no sugar, salt, and fat in any of this stuff. It's all fake, right? And so I'm overweight and I'm sick because the system's not getting, getting what it needs, right? So what's the answer they've created for us? The diet and exercise superhero, man. Diet and exercise to the rescue. Hey, you're overweight, you're sick, it's time for diet and exercise, but we're not gonna call it diet. We're gonna, no, we've evolved diet. We don't wanna use the D word, but we're gonna, we just want you to eat healthy. We want you to be healthy. Diet and exercise. So what is the diet and exercise model all about? Cut the calories, burn more calories. So, so, so diet and exercise man comes in, all right, we need to limit our calories and we need to work out hard, right? And that's the, the calories in, calories out. We got to restrict calories that you're taking in and we got to burn more calories coming out. And so what does that mean? It means salad and sweat, right? It means eat salads and sweat. So while your system's stressed, this is, a, this is always so fascinating because if, if I'm here, my system is stressed, okay? These are signs that the system's stressed. So what are we going to do to help a stressed system? We are going to stress it more. We are going to, again, cut calories a system that's already deprived we're going to cut calories calories are a, a unit of energy it's literally the thing that that gives its fuel think of calories as fuel like i said in the with the 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 you know um like the gasoline analogy so we're going to give you stuff that fill you up but there's no nutritional value i mean i can't tell you how many people i work with that are struggling with their health and they are eating like 800 calories a day like how, how are you, how, why do you think your body is going to have the resource to repair itself <laughs> eating 800 calories a day and you're exercising like a lunatic? Like, and you're wondering why you, you don't feel great and you need to take all this medication. You need to do all this hormone. I mean, it's, it's so unbelievable when you really take a big step out. So 
we're going to starve you even more and we're going to we're going to really tax the system by getting you to exercise more salads and sweat man doesn't make any sense and that's essentially what we're doing right we're we're filling up our car with with water right with no that premium h2o zero octane fuel we're definitely not getting enough calories to actually support our metabolic rate and, and, and increase the body's ability to make energy and repair and recover we, we fill our gas tanks up with oil sorry with oil with water zero octane fuel low to no calories because that's healthy and then we take it to the racetrack we we work out right we take it to the racetrack and we race it around we got to burn a lot of calories this is this is why it leads to this vicious cycle here which is eating too much undernourished then i gotta restrict eat too little undernourished oh man I need to start eating again because I'm, I'm not eating enough and it's round and round we go and it creates sickness. And what do we do about this? We don't address this. We create all of these different things to address all of the problems we have as a result of this. And it's great. I mean, there's lots of businesses that are created because this is the environment and the culture, the toxic culture that we have created that are creating all these problems, sicknesses, and then we create businesses to address the sicknesses, the hormone problems, the sleep problems, the uh, sex drive. Uh, I mean, I don't know. You, you, you could, you, there is an infinite amount of, of things that are addressed in this toxic culture. Okay. Round and round we go. This is, this is the, this is the, the main flaw in systemic care and, nutrition recommendations. And the last thing I'll say here is one of the things we say blood test is the thing to that measures health. Um, later on, I introduce the vitality big six because the things that, that aren't really addressed or looked at or talked about um, as a way of, of measuring health and vitality is how are you sleeping? How's your emotional stability? How's your mental health? Like These things are usually not addressed in the traditional model it's just your blood tests look good you're good yeah but i don't feel well yeah but yeah i think it's all mental you're good your blood looks good it's like man we got so much so many so many better ways to do it okay so that's the key thing to the second part of chapter two